Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. And today I'm going to show you the top 8 pens for the second half of 2020. I will make then a similar video with the top 8 pens for the whole year and it will not be very easy to do because this year I got really nice and many fountain pens so it's quite hard to make um, a, a, a fair ranking of them and today I'm showing these ones and then I will try to make a global one I already made a video similar to this one that you can check which is the pens for, for the first half of 2020 and now these are the pens that impressed me the most for the second half and as usual this video will not have uh, writing samples I will just show you the pen I will have a comparison with another pen just for I think it will make these interesting and uh, I will show you the pen and talk a little bit about it. So, be aware this video may get a little bit long and this is all. Let's start with the pen on the place number 8. And the pen on position number 8 is this one. I have to say, this is the pen from this brand, Benu, that impressed me the most of all the pens I already tried from them. This is the Benu Euphoria and the color is Caviar. This pen is very beautiful, they have it in several colors, it has a very good clip, it has a very good number 6 Schmidt Nib, which is very very well tuned this pen is really amazing. I really like it and I think Benu did a, a great thing in this pen. The facets align themselves, it, it's, it's really well made. It has this very dark uh, grey finish but then you have all these areas with sparkles and all this glitter. I think this is very well made. It is a pen that when you look at it, you will have no doubts it is a Bennu pen, but it is not as, let's call it, sparkly as the others that you can see. This particular color. In this collection they have several other colors, some are glowing in the dark and so on, but this is the most uh, simple and I like it a lot. They just released a special edition for the winter or for Christmas which is an all white with all these glitter things and with a red band and then inside they have a red section. Um, but I think it is a very beautiful pen also so don't forget to check it. Just for comparison I have here another Benu. This is the Benu Supreme a special edition, it is a numbered one they made for the new year of, <laughs> of 2020 when nobody guessed the new year would be like this. It is a green pen with lots of shimmer in it, also a big number 6 Schmidt nib, but this one is better on the, on the Euphoria and the Euphoria is a bigger pen and I think it is very very nicely made. Big pen, I I think this is the best work they did so far. I really really enjoy this pen and it is in number 8 because one of the pens that I'm showing you today had to be on the last place of this ranking but it doesn't mean it is a bad pen, not at all. And now we've seen this beautiful Ben Euphoria, let's go for number 7. And pen number 7 is this pen. This is the Caveco Sport 
the collector's edition and I hope you can see there the name I showed you this pen before it, it is a very exciting pen if you ask me is this one of the best pens you got this year no it is not do you love absolutely the color no it's not that there are other Caveco pens that I like more than this one however this Caveco Sport was uh, a work that we had for some years with Caveco and the Facebook group of Caveco collectors and users to make um, a pen for the group, even if it is not a limited or restricted edition for the members of the group, but it was made by the group. So this was a very long process and finally this came. I was involved in the creation of this pen since the first minute and it took a lot of time and energy from me and I really like the result. This pen really is important to me because when I started with the first the blog then the channel I never expected that I would have a participation as a member of a group of course, but when I created the group I never thought of that also, but as a group I had a participation on the creation of a Caveco pen, so I was in a piece of Caveco history and that makes me quite proud. It will not be my favorite Caveco ever, but it, I think it is the most special Caveco that I have, because this means a lot to me. Just for comparison, and I made this comparison and I made the review of this one, I have here the Coral edition from the Skyline Coral from Fontoplumo, which is more pinkish and it has this guilloche imprint engraving, which is also very nice. So this is also a very interesting pen. At first I thought, okay, the colors are so similar, they are the same, but no, this is definitely more orangey, I think, and I like the result. I'm very happy with this pen, and this is why it is in place number seven. Now, let's see the pen in place number six. And in number six of the ranking, it is this huge pen. And which pen is this? This is a William Shakur. Um, this is a William Shakur Titan pen. It is a very big pen. Made of plastic, yes, not any fancy material. It is a 3D printed pen, um, which looks amazing in my opinion. Maybe it's not the most amazing pen for most of you or a classy one, but I think it is a little bit of my fault. William Shakur made 3D printed pens and he used to make also pens that were faceted and with translucent materials and they were amazing because there was lots of depth in them and also you could see the texture of the lines of the printing, of the 3D printing process. So the pen was very nice. They, they have, some of these pens are very, very nice in terms of what people expect from a fountain pen. I have to say that I love yellow pens, so I could not resist the temptation to get this one. This is a yellow pen, it has a big nib, a number six nib, and it is made of titanium, which is, means it is a flexi nib. It has the threads here on the, just below the nib. It threads very, caps and uncaps very easily. It has these very big three windows in, in opposite sides of, of the pen. And it is a piston filler. I think I told you already. And this is a very beautiful pen. This pen is not comparable with any other pen that I have, but because I'm showing at least one pen that I can compare with, I went for this one, which is also a large pen, and it has the same overall shape. And this is the Penteo Bonita Oversize Black, which is a pen made of ebonite, 
made by hand, a beautiful, beautiful pen uh, that can be eyedroppered or used as a cartridge converter pen with a number 60 of nib, but in that one you have a big number 8 Bok nib made of titanium, so they are not really comparable and even the pen tail here looks smaller. When you think about materials, yes, this material is much nicer, it has lots of manual work here. The material of this one is not that fancy and the, the work is made by a 3D printer, so of course there is the creation part of it and uh, William Shakur does it very well. But it is, it is interesting to see, they are maybe comparable in shape, but then all the processes are very different and I get to like both, even if this is very different, but yellow pens, I have a crush for, or a passion for yellow pens, so I needed to get this one. And now, let's go for number seven. And this is an amazing thing that this pen is in place number, sorry, not number seven, number five. And this is amazing that this pen is only in place number five, but there are some other pens that I like for a different reason. So, and this very nice pen is a Sailor King of Pen. This is an expensive pen. I got it much, much cheaper online and it is the Sailor King of Pen Dark Green. It's also called the Champagne because of the color of champagne bottles. It is a translucent pen. And it has a very big, also number 8 nib. Very beautiful. And it is a, a large pen, a very thick section to hold. And you have a converter that is quite small. It could be bigger. This pen really is one of my favorite pens, but it gets to be so expensive that it's not a pen that you carry with you with you all the time. At least I don't feel that uh, comfortable to use it everywhere, but I really like it. I think it is very beautiful and as usual, sailor pens are very, very nice. Let me just show you the details of the nib. 21k carat gold nib, also uh, quite flexy nib. I'm very happy with this pen. I could buy it at a large discount, that's why I got it. And the pen that I can compare this one with is the Mont Blanc Meisterstuck 149. And if you look at them, you can see that the Sailor is of the same overall, same overall shape but the Sailor is even a little bigger than the Mont Blanc. This one is a piston filler, this one is a cartridge converter pen. And just to show them, here you can see, I would say this, that these two pens fill in the same kind of um, the same, the same kind of niche when you buy these pens. They are both luxury pens, they are both uh, the flagship pens of both brands and I think this is the one you get if you like a pen with this shape and size and if you like piston fillers and this is the one that you get if you prefer cartridge converter pens. That's it. Then you have also, if you want to get in there, if you prefer Japanese or uh, German pen. So this is quite interesting. It is a discussion that you can have. I really like this pen. I just don't use it as much as I would. I have to say that all the pens I'm showing you today here are all inked up right now. Only the Caveco is not because it's kind of my, of my precious thing that is uh, stored because it's very important to me. So this is the Sailor King of Pen. And let's go for the pen number four.
And the pen number four is a pen that I received quite recently. And some of the pens... Okay, there are two pens here that I received very recently. This is one of those. This is the new uh, Furore Leonardo Ficina Italiana Furore Grande and this is the blue Positano color. It is a very beautiful, very beautiful pen with a large section, uh, large size, very big pen, very comfortable to hold. And you can see this step down here and it's very, very comfortable. It has this cigar or I think you may call it cigar shape. It is very, it is a pen that is very well made, very beautiful, and I have to say that I like Leonardo pens a lot. So, this is a nice one. And let me just show it as comparison I have here, a Leonardo Ficina Italiana, uh, Furore, the regular size, the color is passion red. You can see it is shorter, the clip in this one is fatter, and when you uncap both pens, you have the same kind of nib. If you ask me, I think this one, the Furore Grande, should have the bigger nib. But uh, I think when you look at it, it's not out of proportion. So this is really one of the nicest pens around, in my opinion. This one is a cartridge converter pen. This one is a piston filler, no ink window, but the nibs on these pens are amazing. The ebonite feed make them right perfectly, so this is really, really a nice pen that I like a lot. And so, let's go now for the top three. And for position number three, I have a pen that really, really, really impressed me. It's this one. I showed you this pen several times. I didn't make the review of it yet, but the pens that I have a review, I will put links below. I will leave uh, links for the reviews, links for websites where you can buy them if they are available. So it's all down there. Just please check it. And I have this pen that I like a lot. This is the Pilot Elite, Pilot Elite Sterling Silver. It is like, it is a Pilot Elite, but it's not a short pocket Pilot Elite. This is a pen from the 1960s, and it's made of Sterling Silver with this Cizale pattern, which reminds us of the Parker 75, the same kind of idea very different design, just the same finish. And this one has a very big nib that I like a lot, this nib. This nib is wonderful. It is a manifold nib. It is an 18 karat gold manifold nib, which means it was a nib made to be used with copy carbon paper, however you may want to call it. It's a very hard nib, you can press it hard, but you can ha also have some line variation. It is so well made, even the breather hole is at the tip of the pen, so you can feel the pen even if the ink level is very low. You just need the ink level to reach this hole there, and the pen will fill. So this is very, very well made. The problem with this pen, it had an accordion sack filling system that uh, got damaged during the years, so uh, there is no longer available and I kept the original filling system with damaged rubber and I just replaced the that with a cartridge that I made myself. I made a video about that if you want to check it also. So this is a really nice pen. I like it a lot, very nice size, made of sterling silver, a very good nib posts deeply and well and it's comfortable, good size, everything. This is a pen for a writer to write the novel, a novel of his life. It's really a nice pen. And this was number three. Let's go for number two. And the pen on spot number two is 
an Italian pen again and it's this one. This is a Montegrappa. This is a pen that I got kind of a birthday gift and a self birthday gift and this is a, a Montegrappa Mia with the color Meteor Shower. This is not one of the most expensive Montegrappas. Of course Montegrappa is not is never cheap but this was not that expensive and it, I bought it at a discount um, because now there are some discounts at stores and this pen has lots of nice colors that will remind us of a meteor shower it is a, it has this part with a ring but it's not a line cap it's not a, a piston knob nothing it is just a simple cartridge converter pen it has a number six Yovo nib marked as Montegrappa with that, let's call it filigree. It is a medium nib, but it writes well. I like this pen. Overall, this shape will remind us of the shape of the Leonardo pens. And like this. It is very simple, but the resin is gorgeous. And I'm quite happy I was uh, able to get this one. I like it, I like it a lot, and I have to say that I bought it mostly for the resin. I had already a pen that reminded me of this Montegrappa Mia, which was the Montegrappa Montegrappa. And when you look at it, you can see there are really some similarities. The clip is the same in shape, however, this is a little bit longer. This one has the older logo on the cap, this one is the newer one but that's not much of a big difference. The cap is all, almost the same size. This one has this strange band there. This one has a regular plain band with Montegrappa engraved. This has nothing on the barrel. This one has the old logo, old engraving that says Mon like a vintage reproduction, which has Monte Grappa, and Monte Grappa is the mountain Monte is mountain, mountain grappa, so it's the mountain, uh, the local mountain. You have this uh, shiny finish there. This one has the same material, and the same overall shape. That's what you can find on both pens. Some slight differences, and this one, it's empty, so I can show you. Is a piston filler that makes this interesting noise when you're using and this is a cartridge converter pen. It is very nice, it looks great and I have to say this, I know that these nibs are good and I bought this pen just because of the looks and if I could afford it, I would have bought the other two colors. One is Adri Adri Adriatic Sea I guess, I'm not sure, and the other one is the Spice Explosion, which is a yellow one, which is gorgeous, but I cannot afford them all, and I used to have partnership with Montegrappa, and if it was still possible to do it, maybe I could get one at less value, but that's not possible, so I bought this one for my own, because I really, really liked it. And now, let's go for the pen on place number one. And in the first place of my ranking of my top eight pens that impressed me in the second half of 2020, is this one, the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande and this color is the sand. This color is beautiful, I like this pen, I like this pen a lot and this pen is a pen that I like because I like Leonardo pens, this one has the new piston filler mechanism like the same one as the Furore, but if you ask me, I like the design of the Momento Zero better than the design of the Furore. They are mostly the same pen in most aspects, but this one has this like cone ending and the other one has the curved ending, the Furore. So they are different in that 
in that particular detail. And the furore is longer. But the, the Momento Zero Grande is a beautiful pen with a beautiful clip. Um, I already had one, this is the pen that I have for comparison. This is the Momento Zero Grande Dark Hawaii. And the Dark Hawaii had the difference that it had that thing that people call Captive Converter. I'm not sure if it's that. For me it is a cartridge, it is a, a real converter. Uh, sorry, it is a real piston, but just you have to remove the the barrel or the blind cap to be able to use it and this pen takes more ink but that's not what makes me like this pen more than this one I have to say that I like both but what makes me like this one more than that one is the beautiful material this is one of the most beautiful and unique materials that I think I can find in a fountain pen today and I have to say that the finish in this one really amazes me and I love using this pen and besides all that it has a very good number six fine bock nib yes some people say that bock nibs are no good it's not my experience I like uh, bock there's nothing against them with an ebonite feed that is always where the pen writes beautifully this pen is amazing and this is why it is in number one of my ranking so let's just put them all together like for a family photo and end this video so number eight the Benu Euphoria Caviar number seven the Caveco Sport Collectors Edition the number six the William this will not fit Never mind. This is the William Shakur Titan Yellow. Then in number five, the Sailor King of Pen Dark Green. The number four, Leonardo Ficina Italiana Furore Grande Blue Positano. <laughs> Very long name. You have to take deep breath because before you say the name of the pen. Then the Pilot Elite Sterling Silver. Amazing writer's pen, everyday pen, very, very good. I like it a lot. Then the gorgeous Monte Grappa Mia Meteor Shower, and finally the amazing Leonardo Piccini Italiana Momento Zero Grande Sand. And this is my top eight for the second half of the year. And soon, I'm not sure if it will still be in 2020 or in the beginning of 2021, I will show you the real top. I don't know if it will be a top eight. I'll try to keep it that way. The top pens that impressed me the most in the whole year. So I will have to check the pens that I had in my top in the first half of the year, join with them and then decide. And it will not be as simple as deciding that I will join the first four with the, 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 the top four of one video with the top four with the other video because it will not be that simple. So there may be some arrangement to get to the final top and maybe because I need to make also some choices like the variety of them to avoid some repetitions but you will see that soon this is all i had to show you i hope you liked the video please don't forget to like and subscribe and keep coming back for more videos like this one so see you next time bye